Good morning, everybody. Um, so uh, I see that another attack has been put out on me yesterday, and it is actually a very good teaching moment. So this is what today's video is going to be on, okay? So I spoke to you yesterday in my opening video that I was gonna, going to be getting further into the spiritual world and what actually causes people on this uh, planet to have bad behavior, to um, attack others, to have hatred in their heart, to have envy. See, these are all, the, all what the Bible calls the seven deadly sins. And why do you think that there are deadly sins? Number one, they will destroy a person's life. They will, they will make a person um, live in a state of sin that is so great against the source. You must understand that we are not these forms. We are not the psychological mind. We are only consciousness and prana. We, we, our natural state is a state of love and a state of bliss. And this is what we're all trying to get back to. What causes our states of the seven deadly sins, greed, lust, fear, um, gluttony, um, I said lust, um, envy, pride, all of it, the seven deadly sins. And then we have the state of fear that we're in, um, it's all, it's all found in the personhood. It's all found in the personhood and the psychological mind. And who is actually running the psychological mind? These are the deep questions that we all need to ask. Who actually is running the psychological mind? Because the psychological mind is exactly the exact opposite of our divine mind. We have these poles of light and dark. We've all learned about them, good and evil. The concept of duality that is what's taught about what we're all living in while we're in the personhood is the concept of duality. That is the light and the dark, the shadow side and the light side, um, good and evil, good and bad, uh, right and wrong, all of these poles that we live with here on this planet. And understand that it all emanates from the personhood, not from divinity. Because divinity is only consciousness and prana that's all that's all the source is is actually observing this whole game that is being played out by the demons that rule the earth this is what's happening this is what I tried to explain to you uh, several times already the emotions that we have especially the deep negative emotions um, these are entities these uh, negative thoughts, the negative self-talk, um, the thoughts that we have to hurt another person, to defame another person, um, they're all put into us by these negative entities. And here's the one thing that I would like to share with everybody. It's just another fallacy that has been brought to us courtesy of religion to say that Satan or the devil or demons are actually against God and trying to be God and overtake God, which is also a fallacy. You see, everything is God. Everything is God, even these demons. And everything in the spiritual world is, um, is run on a hierarchy. There are various levels of angels. And the word angel only means messenger. That's it. So even, even uh, demonic, there are demonic angels. They're only messengers. That's all that word means. The word angel means messenger. So we have those of the heavenly realm and those of the lower realms. And they're all here to bring us messages. And they're all here to help us break free of the personhood. You see? And we're all put through tests, trials, and tribulations. Our test becomes our testimony. And it all serves to glorify God. Those who have worked diligently and earnestly on the path come to see this fully, come to be this fully. And um, even Jesus Christ up until the end was, was tested by Satan when he was walking through the desert for 40 days. So the source will allow these tests 
And these tests cannot happen unless the source allows them. Understand that. And here's the concept here. God will only correct his most chosen disciples. So if you have not gone through a dark night of the soul, you might want to ask yourself why that is. God will only correct his most chosen disciples. And this is why at, I've said it all along because I had seen it. I didn't fully know the true meaning of all of this yet. And I, I now do. I believe I do. Is that our entire existence down here will be a test. Because if God can't trust us with the small things, how can he trust us with the big things? See? It's all a test. And so on that note, there's two things I would like to tell you. I started listening to uh, Truth Seeker's book last night. You can find it on Amazon and on Audible. It's called uh, Spirit Realm, Angels and Demons. And it's absolutely excellent. He's stating uh, a lot of the stuff that I've been talking to you about about the entities, um, the, the different types of demons that are sent to us, and um, that when you play around in the occult, when you play around with these powers, when you play around with tarot cards, when you play around with pendulums, when you play around with channeling, that you are opening yourself up, you are actually opening up a portal to be possessed by demons. He confirms this. Truth Seeker was also a Satan worshiper in the beginning of his journey. So he's been on the dark side and now he's on the light. He knows the full realm of what's happening here. So he confirmed, supported, reiterated everything I've ever told you out here. You see, while, while everyone is in the sleep and they believe that they're the body-mind, it looks like that this 3D reality is what was what's real. When you when you increase in vibration and decrease in consciousness so greatly, you can't see the physical forms anymore. You can only see the spiritual world, which is where I am at this point. I only see the spiritual world. And this is um this is actually a chess match. The source will actually allow demons to attack us. The source has to give his permission for demons to attack us. And I will refer you back to the book of Job where the angels went to meet with the Lord and in that group of angels that went to meet with angels are messengers when uh, in that group of, of angels that went to meet with the Lord Satan was there and the Lord said to Satan have you seen my disciple Job there's none other like him and eventually Satan was given permission to kill all of Job's children to remove every worldly possession that he ever had and then to afflict him with a serious illness. And God told Satan that Job would never, ever turn on him or denounce him. Well, in the end, as Job prayed and prayed and prayed after everything was taken from him, he finally did turn on God. And then God came down and walked with him and blessed him abundantly and explained to him all that has happened. See, when those who are anointed, those who have gone through a serious dark night of the soul and have gotten rid of all of our traumas and find that there are our demons still attacking us. I used to really ponder this and, and say, why, why, why? And I used to really try to come out here and just make everybody see who these people were. And in fact, there was no reason for that. I could just sit here and smile. 
because it's their own darkness, their own envy, their own jealousy, their own hatred in their heart, their own demons attached to them inside of them that cause them to behave this way. And they wouldn't be attacking me if the Lord had not given his permission. And the Lord will only give his permission for something like this to happen to one of his anointed ones, unless there was something great planned for us. And I say, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So I'd like to read a little bit from the book of Job for you, okay? Father God, I ask that you bless this reading. I ask that you bless the hearts of all who hear it. Slow down their minds and open their hearts and let them understand your words. Let them see your light. Let them see your truth. And if it is your will, allow them to connect to you and be rid of this personhood once and for all. If it is your will, allow these demons to keep attacking me, and I will praise you. I will praise you in their presence. I thank you, Lord, for looking upon me as being one who is deserving of this test. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. So it's, this is the book of Job, chapter 5. Call if you will, but who will answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? Resentment kills a fool, and envy slays the simple. I myself have seen a fool taking root. But suddenly his house was cursed. His children were far from safety, crushed in court without a defender. The hungry consume his harvest, taking it even from among thorns. And the thirsty pant after his wealth, for hardship does not spring from the soil, nor does trouble sprout from the ground. Yet man is born to trouble, as surely as sparks fly upward. But if I were you, I would appeal to God. I would lay my cause before him. He performs wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that cannot be counted. He provides rain for the earth. He sends water on the countryside. The lowly he sets on high, and those who mourn are lifted to safety. He thwarts the plans of the crafty, so that their hands achieve no success. He catches the wise in their craftiness. And the schemes of the wily are swept away. Glory, hallelujah. Darkness comes upon them in the daytime. At noon they grope as in the night. He saves the needy from the sword in their mouth. He saves them from the clutches of the powerful. So the poor have hope and injustice shuts its mouth. Blessed is the one whom God corrects. Hear this closely. Blessed is the one whom God, whom God corrects. So do not despise the discipline of the Almighty. Hallelujah. For he wounds, but he also binds up. He injures, but his hands also heal. From six calamities, he will rescue you. In seven, no harm will touch you. In famine, he will deliver you from death and in battle from the stroke of the sword. You will be protected from the lash of the tongue and need not fear when destruction comes. Amen, amen, thank you, Jesus. You need not fear when destruction comes. You will laugh at destruction and famine and need not fear the wild animals for you will have a covenant with the stones of the field and the wild animals will be at peace with you. You will know that your tent is secure. You will take stock of your property and find nothing missing. You will know that your children will be many and your descendants like the grass of the earth. You will come to the grave in full vigor, like sheaves gathered in season. 
We have examined this, and it is true. So hear it and apply it to yourself. Amen. So, in short, we all have to understand that until we reach the place of many, many, many words for this, I will just keep it simple and just say the nothingness. And until we reach this place and can see everything as the source, there is nothing that is separate from the source. But we also understand the spirit world and know that it's real. And in this 3D world on planet Earth, this is our, our school. It's one of the hardest schools in the whole multiverse. And whatever the source lets loose from the heavens to show us whatever lesson we need, to give us whatever correction we need, to if our ego is too big, he will pounce us down to make us humble. Um, whatever correction is needed, the source will determine that. And for those who are, who are living for being in the oneness with the source, it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It doesn't mean that, that we welcome pain and suffering. Um, what happens? We don't suffer any longer. We understand what's happening, and we only look for the lessons. That's it. God corrects his, his anointed ones, and that's what I would like to say. So whatever my lesson is here, I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. And I hope that you will do the same. So continue on your path. Be strong in the Lord. Um, I, would, I would really recommend that you get True Seeker's book, The Spirit Realm, Angels and Demons. Um, you can find it on Amazon and Audible. And please understand, please, please, please understand that when people attack you, degrade you, defame you, it only means that the demon of envy is with them. The demon of hatred is with them. And you will understand by the scripture, you've got to go back to the scripture. And I don't care from what religion you come from, you've got to go back to the scripture. Every scripture teaches us about the spirit world and about the demons and how they attack and who they attack. And how did you let them in? Because we all had to give our permission to allow these demons to come in. And it's through the work of of getting rid of this personhood that we take control of this form of our environment and we get rid of the personhood and we stand solely in line with the source and uh, we will close all doors all portals to the lower realms do you understand so we always look to the source and thank him for his grace, for his teaching, for his test that will undoubtedly become a testimony only to glorify him. So with that, I bless you all. I hope you have a blessed and beautiful day. Amen. God bless everybody.